Um, <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> First question, who is Dominic? <laughs> See, I knew this was coming. <laughs> you know, I've been doing my research. <laughs> you've been trying to work out who's doing what you're research still, on who Dominic is. I still don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've heard that before. Yeah. I still don't know. Yeah. Um, Ever changing, I think it's mm. constantly changing. From you know, all, I've had a very wiggly route to get to where I am now. Um, but I think we've, we've, when we started the YouTube channel, we kind of summarised it as, uh, and I've kind of logo designs, which I'll show you. Actually, Dave Smith designed. I'm, I'm called myself the ameliorator of the everyday, right? Mm. Which is, it summarises what I kind of do at work and here and every aspect of my life is mm -hmm. to ameliorate is to improve or to make better. Mm. So we're just kind of making things better, whether it's people's days, people's items, people's belongings, motorbikes, I like it. I'm so glad he better. described what Ameliator meant there. Yeah. I had like, <laughs> <laughs> was about to show my very small No, you're kidding. Like, no, I had to look up this. Yeah, I had to find the word. I was like, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, yeah, I had no idea what it meant. Very old, very old fashioned word. Mm. But Dave Smith, good friend of mine that does uh, reverse glass gilding. And, and oh, cool. Really, really like, amazing guy. Very lucky that he designed the logo for me. It's, it's beautiful. Really, really nice. So yeah, that's it. So, the ameliorator. So as an ameliorator, <laughs> no how does learned. that convey to craft and to making things? I guess it's making my days better as well, mm. in a way. I'm making things better by restoring things. But it's it's day to day for me better. I just enjoy what I do, basically. And it, it can be as simple as that, can it? Like, I enjoy doing this stuff, so I'm going to do more of this stuff, and this stuff is going to become the job. That's it. And that yeah. was going, I mean, even if I go right back to like school days, I was not very good at academically in school uh, and it just ended up hiding in the kind of music and arts kind of studio there. Yeah. And I've managed to kind of, I'm quite fortunate in a way that I've managed to wiggle my way through life, education and college and uni and everything, and just doing exactly that mm. with that kind of mindset. No idea what I wanted to do as a job, but just like, I enjoy doing that. I'll do that. Yeah. 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 And that's kind of been the, the, thought process or lack of thought process <laughs> throughout the whole journey yeah. really something nice about the lack of thought process isn't there like yeah. just going with much, it. yeah. it's almost instinctual isn't it mm. yeah like we all think i remember when careers day or going to the careers office at school was announced that like you got an appointment at the careers office you're like all oh, right cool so i'm like 16 now <laughs> I'm, yeah. just, I'm about to apply for a provisional license and i now need to decide what i'm going to do for the for rest the of my rest life 40 years yeah. just i've just learned yeah. how to fill in a form <laughs> you know what i mean yeah it's absolutely bonkers but that's why i think that's why i do i try and do as much as i can now with uh to help promote apprenticeships mm. and inspiring the next generation of craftspeople or just, yeah. just kids and other people in general really that because when i was in school I had no idea at all. I mean, I spent 10 years or more, uh, more than that, doing set design. Mm. And I had no idea that that was a job when I was at school, at these the classes that you're saying, mm. where you've got to they fill in the form. Nope. I didn't know set design was a, no. was a job. And, and I didn't how know... cool would it be if you did know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. If, you, if I could have been exposed to some of the stuff that I've been exposed to now, then yeah. I would have had a very different journey through. So yeah. I feel like, and it's, I'm from Essex, from near South End, and it's just like, you know, I wasn't in the hustle and bustle of London. I was out in the country there. Yeah. Part, maybe partly my fault, but I didn't really kind of get too far out from there other than day trips to London. But it's kind of like you could very easily miss uh, just being go to a, going to one craft fair and meeting a blacksmith there or a wood turner or something like that can completely change somebody's direction in life. Mm -hmm. So I try and do as much as I can now to spread the word, really. It's a very similar theory to what we're doing, like yeah. say yes to everything. Like say yes to everything because you don't know whether someone's got this huge account and we've spoke to people with massive accounts on social media or tiny accounts. Like you just don't, you don't know. Don't know where it's going to go. Yeah. Shannon and Bill Oyster summed it up perfectly to us. There was two statements. Shannon said, say yes to everything because you don't know where it's going to go. And Bill said, calculate, what was it? It was calculate the cost in not doing something, yeah. not the cost to do it. And I was like, oh, you're on something the positive, there. calculate the cost of not doing it. Well, then it's the what if, isn't it? Yeah. And exactly. it's better to have, is it better to have done it and regret doing it because, oh, that was a pain, that was a nightmare, yeah. instead of like not doing it and thinking, oh, that would have been good. Yeah. Without yeah. sounding yeah. cliche, I think it is that. Yeah. It is, it's, you're better to have just tried it, right? Because like, you, you don't know. It could be the best thing that ever happened to you or it could be 
even you learn from it though, yeah. don't you? Yeah, that's... That's, so that's how I, I mean, so when I started my own company, the set design company, so many jobs, I'm so bad at like running a business. It was really funny. <laughs> like, well, it wasn't funny, it was terrifying, but it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it funny that. now. It's it wasn't funny, funny at all, yeah, it's funny <laughs> now. And say it's no hilarious. Yeah. yeah, but it was exactly that. It's like, you'd get phone calls from people and the emails and people would come in, it's like, amazing magazine or an amazing artist that wants something making or somebody for a shoot of some editorial somewhere and i would just say yes for that reason uh -huh. like i like them this is cool this is a fun job i want to do it yeah but they but the fun jobs were very rarely the ones that actually paid the bills mm. and i would end up so often just saying yes to the jobs because it was a fun job convincing myself that Oh, you never know where it's going to go. You know, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. doing exactly that. Like, yeah. Oh, I can't is... afford my shopping this week, but you never know where it's going to go. But that go. was a really fun job, and then it ended up, yeah, like being really stressful. But it was fun, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's that. Uh, it's yeah. It's going through kind of life doing that. Be like, just picking, not even picking and choosing, because when you've got your own company, you are really saying yes to pretty, pretty much everything. Yeah, yeah, anyone that's coming through. So it's like, but it's yeah, it's fun. It's good fun. Do you think that saying yes is paying off now? Oh. Yeah, because my life has changed hugely mm. from that first email that came through when they said, do you want to be on the repair shop? Well, I'd made the sign. That's how the first email came through. I designed, designed and built the, the, the light up sign out the front of the barn. Mm. But then when, they, when it started getting serious, it was like, oh, well, can we come and cast you to be on the show? And I was just like, at that saying yes to that, I was just like, I'd spent 10 years on more building up a business. I was just getting to a point where I had regular clients that trusted me, big jobs, traveling all over, you know, it was kind of going in a really good direction. It's like, I've spent so long doing this. It's like, do I really want to, it's like, I don't know, I'll just do it, we'll see, again, we'll just yeah. see how it goes. We'll say yes, we'll go for it. And yeah, and that's completely changed my life. Yeah. Completely. Yeah, yes. so, yeah, for, just for the yes better. Yeah, 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 for yeah. just saying. And it's quite nice that the guys there at the repair shop like actually approached. You, you see a lot of presenter-based stuff, and there's there's credit to that because a good presenter is a good entertainer. For ultimately, sure. it I'm needs to be not that. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but having someone from that side that you know you got into it by making the sign for it, it's it's the perfect antithesis of saying yes to anything. Yeah. Like you, you, they don't, don't they literally don't know where it's going to go, and yeah. look what's happened. From yeah, saying exactly. yes to designing that sign and making that sign, which there, at the time was just another job, like yeah. the, like the stars and all this is the same as all of these I was already making yeah. just in the shape of the repair shop but just saying yes to that has ended up this is it you never know yeah <laughs> that's what I say to lots of people is just sort of expose just try and expose yourself I wrote an email to a kid the other day uh, that got in touch with just like I want to do woods work I want to do this I want to do that how do I where do I go what do I do it's like just get out there yeah get out there get like you know books like you produce yeah YouTube channels what go to craft fairs meet people talk to people and, and people need to know you're there yeah yeah, because so many crafts people, if they see if you've got that spark yeah. and you've mm -hmm. got that kind of fire, the crafts people they'll see it and they'll pick it up and they'll be like, yeah, come, come down, mm -hmm. yeah, come down, have the day, you know. Yeah. People are like you say, people are people are nice in this industry in this craft world. And We've been well to... received around the world. Exactly, I'm not surprised because I think what you do are, is 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 really well, really you. good. Oh, like you. building a lovely platform mm. to inspire people. Yeah, and that is it yeah. as well. That's because... what it is. You're buying 124 pages of inspiration. Yeah, and the, the nice thing about it is you're buying the everyone's journey is totally different yeah. and you've done a really really good job of putting together not only different crafts but different avenues to that craft yeah well everyone's got a story don't everyone's they like yeah. you just yeah. never know like you come out of school and you know you're, you're arty and creative but there's never really where do you go for that yeah you yeah. know so to have something like that at a younger age would be great you know that you can aspire to be that yeah it's, like it's proof in a way yeah. that they've done it yeah they're doing it yeah you i know? mean it don't get it's hard but it's worth it, yeah. yeah. I think, anyway. This is what I say to lots of people on the Make It, make it a Market show. It's just like, that we're going to do the press interviews and things for it. It's kind of, oh, you know, it's, they're, 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 how, it's this magic formula. I was like, no, it's not a magic formula. It's, it's hard. They yeah. work really hard. I know you only see a small 10-minute section of it on the telly, but they've spent months and months of mm. real hard graft. The ones that succeed and do well, just, yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot. It's hard. It's a lot. Yeah. So talking to that journey, like we've just said, you know, we try and interview people with all different journeys, whether they've had artistic parents or not, whether they've grown up on a farm or in the city. Where did it all start from you? Because metalwork as well, it's, it's a bigger, heavier industry to get into from the start. It's not like, grand, and, and it's nothing against wood turning, but it's not like 
Grandpa had an old lathe in the back of it and yeah. I just give it a shot. Like this is all specialist kit. I always get a bit jealous of people that uh, that either, <laughs> yeah. either have a craft where they just need basic tools, really basic tools and yeah. a really small studio uh -huh. in the shed in the garden. Uh -huh. oh, it's just like, man, I'm so uh, Yeah, or their parents and grandparents have done it and they're just, they're just like, all of just, there you go, yeah. over to you now. Yeah. It's like, man, like this has been a huge amount of work yeah. to get to this point, mm. like, massive. When mm. I first, signed my lease for my first workshop after quitting my job, I had nothing, absolutely nothing. I've got pictures of when I moved in, there was literally a wire sticking out the wall <laughs> where there used to be a fuse box, no power, no toilet, nothing. It was derelict like storage unit in East London. I had barely any hand tools, literally like, back to like, nothing. It's, like, it's starting from, from scratch basically. So. And this is when you started as a set design? Doing set involved. design, yeah, mm. exactly. But I think it started before then really, even as a kid, but I mean, I, but I had my first car, was, I was about 15. It was on my paper round, saved up my paper round money. And on my paper round, there was a Beetle, 69, air-cooled Beetle, silver. Um, and it was on the paper round. I'd walk past it every week, give them a paper every week and kind of walk really slowly down their drive, <laughs> hoping to catch one of them maybe one day and chat about the car like every week and never see anyone. And then one day I caught them and, they'd like, and we only lived up the road so and ended up with that, buying that with my paper round money. Oh, <laughs> and then getting it, getting it running, basically. That nice. was where it all started. Little old 69 Beetle. And that was it, Hook was in? That was it, yeah. That had the Beetle, then that escalated into other Beetles and various other ones and camper vans, bay windows, late and got earlier and earlier and split screens. And it's always been cars. Right. It's always been cars. And even from before then, it was go-karts and bikes and push bikes and that classic kind of, journey of me and my brother the yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly the cliche kind yeah. of like, yeah, yeah. yeah taking apart things yeah. and building stuff and making dangerous go-karts and building bike jumps and like bmxing <laughs> and stuff like that from you know messing around with stuff what was the old advert if you can yeah. fix a skateboard you can fix a. I think it's mystery is it mod or one of the i think it's mod yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's if, perfect if you can fix a skateboard you can fix a bike you can fix a car you can and then it's a a helicopter. Yeah, and then it jumps to a helicopter yeah, <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> I'm not quite there yet, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm on the path. I'm on the path, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's been, yeah, it's been that route basically, which is it's been good. So when is it you started your set design and build company? Ooh, I'm terrible with dates and stuff like that, but it was probably about over 10 years ago. Right. So I had, I'm, I, I, went, I did go through the normal routes of kind of went to college, went to uni, uh, did graphic design at cool. uni. It's always yep. useful graphic design. <laughs> yeah, really. I'm very. I remember, lots of people say uni was no like was useless for what I'm actually doing now. Most of the time, it's not super helpful, but every now and then, we, it's handy. really handy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a, it just and obviously the discipline it teaches you is, is important as well. But yeah, uni was a brilliant time in South End, um, and then I just kind of went through. What was your question? How yeah, long sorry. you had the, the set design and what the set? Yeah, how so, you got sorry, to that? So I went from college there to working for Rankin, photographer, fashion photographer in Right, London. okay. Uh, and I was with him for about six years or so. Well, so yeah. I had like a proper job. That was my, well, I say proper job, it was a bit of a mad job to be honest, <laughs> right, yeah. being right, working for him. But that was my job and then I was there and then I quit that and started my own company. Yeah, ah. doing sets. So I was his, I started off as a photo assistant, as an intern basically, right. bottom of the pile, kind of working for nothing. Yeah. Worked my way up as a photo assistant, cameras, lighting, because my, my degree was quite heavily photography led, basically. Um, so I worked, wanted to work for a photographer, learned, knew a lot about the cameras and stuff like that. Le well, learned lighting with him, mm. but he didn't have anyone doing his set at all. Right. He okay. would outsource it all the time and get mm. set designers in. So then I would kind of be exposed to that environment. Yeah. And then they'd come in and be like, Rankin, I could build that. Or he'd be stuck sometimes without a set designer. I'd be like, we need a wall with a window that I can shine a light through to get the kind of thing. I was like, well, that's cool. I'll go and give a yeah. shit, you know, I'll yeah. go and get some. Yeah. yeah. Gradually built up some tools, got a kind of few resources there, and then ended up sort of running his old set, set design department. Had so a you built of people the department? There. Yeah, Quite there was literally. no department. Yeah, yeah. so we, had, we built that that's and then cool. had a couple of people there. It was really good. Really, really good. He was, I sort of, he can be, he, people have got mixed feelings of him, Rankin, mm. he's a bit of a character, but I've got a lot of respect for him, I think. He gave me a lot of chances because I'm not trained in set design at yeah. all. Gave you that opportunity, didn't he? He gave me the opportunity to, on some terrifyingly big commercial jobs when I shouldn't really have been doing them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like, yeah. But he, yeah. yeah, he sort of, he gave me the, a good few opportunities to, and I loved it, it was good fun. How important do you think that is for people to just 
get in and get their hands mucky. Absolutely, the most important thing, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah, that's it. I yeah. couldn't agree more. There's so many things like you've gone in from a photography intern point of view, and then quite literally built a department just by being keen. Yeah, like whether it's um, you know whether you're going to set up your own thing and and be a metal worker, wood turner, furniture maker, whatever. It is. It's like just get at, at it, like just get after it and just see what happens. Have a go, yeah. just try. Yeah, you learn so much more from those mistakes. And you might find something completely new, like from being in that set design world, I met so many talented people, like scenic artists, mm. massive, whole nother world, a whole nother career, whole nother path of journey into another world of kind of like, wow, props houses, prop styling, so many different areas amongst that world. I was yeah, involved yeah. in the kind of design, building, fabricating side of it, but it's like, it was, it's fascinating. Yes. And you'd never know that mm -hmm. unless you, go and meet these people and chat to people and talk to people and, and have that kind of attitude of, I want to have a go. Yeah. Roll your sleeves up and get stuck in. Yeah, have that real world expo exposure to it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kind of allows you to give you that confidence to then go and start yourself, I suppose, mm. you know? Yeah. I think. Being exposed to it and having, being, being in that situation and having to, you know, like make do. We've sort of been in some weird situations there, like dropped off in the middle of the desert somewhere and having to make a music video and then we need to kind of fashion something out of whatever we've got. And it's kind of, you know, you... you Pressure. Yeah, but it's like you, 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 you get used to working in that way, I suppose. It's yeah. just, yeah, it's, it's... They're making it happen way, right? Making it happen, which we're still doing now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you've obviously, you got to a point where you're like, right, I'm going to go and do do it for myself. What was the big push to go and do it for yourself? Because it's been quite easy. You've built your department there. It feels like you had your own little yeah, egg. Yeah, and I don't really know the answer to that. It's just like, it's, it wasn't, because it wasn't, it wasn't restricting because there was the big ad jobs, the big clients traveling all over the world, mm -hmm. literally all over the world, yeah. all the time. It was an amazing job. Everything was there, the company card, you know, it was like, it was there. Yeah. I could have just stayed there. But there was something, and I, I don't know what it is, what it was really, that's just like, I wanted to have my own space. Right. To do my own stuff. I think it was relentless, that it was so busy. It's, mm. He is such a, he's worked so hard and it is full on there. It's just like, if I have my own space, I can do my own stuff. I didn't have any classic cars, I didn't have any cars. There was no kind of like personal projects or anything going on. Mm. So it's like, oh, I think I missed the bit of that and I just wanted my own, to build something of my own. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it's like, I guess there's like a longevity of having a job. It's actually, if you're building something of your own, you're, you, you're, create, you're building something. Not that for someone else, but for yourself. It's for yourself. Yeah, it's yeah. Building, yeah exactly. So it's like, but it hasn't been any less work. It's a lot, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not like, a, I still don't have time for personal projects really. Yeah. <laughs> so enough exchange there. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you get to that point, you're like, I'm going to do this for me. And then you're like, but wrenched you. <laughs> have days off when I fancy it. And have the, yeah, exactly. No, no, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to work three, three times as many hours, but I'm going to make those hours work for me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't quite work like that. <laughs> but looking back on it, you've built some, you know, you've come, I know it wasn't this building, but from wires sticking out the wall to all of this. Yeah. That's a journey. It has been a journey. Yeah, yeah. it has. And it's been, it's, been a, it's been a good one. Yeah. It really has. And it's... It's like some, people, some people come in here and say, oh, you're so lucky to have this. And it's kind of like, I know a few other people you've been here who talked about luck and it's just like, it's, it, it, there is other elements of luck, like the fact that the, the repair shop asked me to make the sign and things yep. like that, the right place. Maybe it's the right place, right time. Yeah. But a lot of it is being resourceful, mm. I think. Because a lot of the machines that I've got here, uh, I had from the old workshop and they've kind of come with me. Uh, most of them have, have been, they've bought them cheap because they're broken and I fixed them. Yeah. I would like, never, I don't think any of these really I've bought new. They're yeah. all kind of like knackered old retired machines. I'm sort of piecing back together and it's just starting from scratch. It's, been, it's hard work. It's all been a lot yeah. of hard work. Yeah. It's not just the work that the machines do, it's the work to get the machines to do the work they do. Like what you <laughs> wanted them to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's so much in that as well. You know, I always encourage people that if you're going to like buy good stuff, even if you need to buy old stuff second, buy good stuff rather than the, rather than the, the crap yeah. sheet metal so like just buy the good one yeah. or if you're in the if you're in the woodworking space like go and buy the old wadkin like you might need to do a load of work to it or change the motor or but, but buy the good stuff i had an old wadkin table so i loved it yeah right the beast of a machine yeah. yeah exactly big sharpenable blades all that kind of stuff it's like, all nuts and bolts it's yep. all repairable it's all fixable yeah and yeah. you learn so much from that as well and you're able to build a bigger a bigger shop you've got ultimately more reliable tools yes you've had to fix them but 
when they go wrong, you can then fix them again. Yeah. There's yeah. downtime. Like as a business, you don't want that downtime. You and then I think more. that builds a respect for the tools as well. Mm -hmm. In a way, you respect because I've not been trained in any of this. This yeah. is all just me muddling through. Like the mill was a fairly new addition, but been yep. a year or so. Never touched one before in my life. I was really? like, no, never. Quite it's probably your like, world, isn't it? It's like it's you probably, my world, you yeah. could drive that better than me. But I can I, drive it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd never, never, and the same for the lathe. Mm -hmm. It's like, and it's, this is all Ranola related, but it's just like, I'd never had one, never used one the mill. Always aspired, like wanted to, like a few times, it's like, oh, that'd be really handy. If I had a mill, I could do that. If I had a lathe, I could make mm. that bigger, make that smaller, whatever I'm doing. And it's just like, if I just get one, I'll just learn, I'll teach myself. Yeah. I can watch some videos, read books, I've got the manual, I can kind of like make my mistakes. Mm -hmm. Dangerous how that may be on these big machines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't, maybe don't yeah. advise that, but it's kind of like this, like you were saying earlier, get stuck in. It's just like, if I just get the machine, then I can learn yeah. slowly, but I can, uh, you know, some, I've had people show me bits here and there and I'm kind of like, I can kind of muddle through now. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of all right for the basics, but yeah. You, you raise an important point there as well as having the people show you bits and bobs. That to me is, that's the important bit. Yeah. Like knowing who you can rely on. Like if you don't know, who can you rely on? Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how to roll sheet metal. I'll now phone you if I need to. <laughs> yeah. you know? And you'll be like, no, no, phone this guy. Yeah, so, speak to Jeff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But like knowing and building those good relationships, which kind of goes back to that, like saying yes to everything, being nice to everybody you come across. Like you're yeah. building these relations. You never know when you're going to need to help in hand, you know? Yeah. How lucky have we been with helping hands over like even that America tour? How many people could we stay with just because you know people, you speak respectfully to people and yeah. and you just get, again, get stuck in. Yeah, but I, best guess, I guess because I've been the intern <laughs> runner at the studio mm. with Rankin, I've been the bottom of the pile. Mm. I think that kind of makes you respect when now when, when you're on set and you see other people, you, it's, you, it's, there is a kind of like, I've been there, yeah. I appreciate it. You know, it's like you do, you, you, you're nice, just nice to everyone because one day, that runner is going to be the commissioner. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they'll remember, it's a very small world. This yes. craft world, I'm sure you found out as well. It's yeah. everyone knows everyone through some way or another. It's a yep. very, very small world. But And again, like the film industry. Yeah. Like, most good producers started as a runner somewhere. Exactly. Like, nobody just turned up as a producer one day. No. Oh. How many people have they gone through that then they now rely on? Even Dave Watkins, I do a lot of my work for, like a lot of his best contacts are people that were coming up at the same time as him that then went to producer level and that's so how he gets a lot of his work. Right. I get a lot of my work through people that I've worked with or done favours to or, or just got stuck in on a project they didn't know how to do. Yeah, help and someone it, it's out. It's help, so yeah. important, it's yeah. so important. And I mean, even if you go down, uh, I'm not always the biggest fan of craft fairs because I don't think there's a good way yet. There's not like a Yelp for craft fairs. To be like, this yeah. is the good one. Which one to go to, yeah. that's true, yeah. I think there's so many of them, but you don't know which one's the best. I say I'm not a fan of them. I am a fan of them as a whole. I just think there's so many of them. But it's not even which one's the best, it's which one's the best for, for what you sell. Exactly. Yes, that's it. It's which the audience, your one? who's yes. buying, who's yeah. there. You want to go there where your audience is, not go to one where nobody, they just go right past you because they're not interested. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I've done a few crap, like fairs myself. With your and, furniture, and, yeah. You know, you just, I wasn't said, oh, don't, don't do that because it wouldn't suit you or I haven't been told, oh, that's good, you should go for that one. You just try it out because you don't know how to ask. Yeah. When, you're, when you're starting out, you don't know how to ask, you know? And you paid hundreds of pounds to it's, go to a fair, uh -huh, uh -huh. travelled down there, exactly. hotels, driven yeah. down. It's expensive. Yeah, set your stuff up. It must, I've never done that. I've obviously now doing Make It At Market, I've been exposed to fairs, I've seen them, and I've seen the journey yeah. they've gone through. But I've never, because I'm not the maker so much, it's like I've gone through that kind of work, I have my own workshop. I don't really ever sell products so much so I've never had mm. to do a craft fair mm -hmm. it must be hard yeah terrifying it is when you yeah. don't when you're making all this stock and it doesn't sell and you're like I've just spent so long making that like who, who's going to buy it now you know there's that fear in the back of your head yeah now but, what like I've just spent ages doing all that yeah, so yeah. I guess there's things you can, I can relate to that with bits from the set design stuff but it's like it's I've got a lot of respect for all the people, the craft, well, like yourself, craft people that are that are doing it. Yeah. I went to a craft fair for the show, and it's, and it's there were hundreds and hundreds of stalls, hundreds of craft people, and every single stall was like mind blowing talent. Yeah. It's like that is insane. That yeah. is so good. That is so. It's just like wow. This is there's a lot of talented people out there. Oh yeah, there is. Yeah, there is so <laughs> many talented people out there, and you know, it's part of our our mission is like there is so many talented people. Yeah, and. Talents that you just don't even realise are a thing. There's like stuff wheeling. In, like yeah. wheeling. Yeah. Like I, I was convinced it was dead. And actually, that's <laughs> my first exposure to you, like pre-repair pre, pre -repair shop, pre 
pre-make it at market was I'd seen someone was remaking wheels. Oh, so really? That, yeah, I'd seen it on Instagram, the 1935 ah, Randall wheels. Yeah. And I think it was about the time I was speaking to the guys at BGI who were doing the B12 bomber for Flyboys. Oh, nice. So my first exposure was seeing, wait, these look like new wheels on Instagram. Ah. But I've, I've never been around them and I've never known them, but yeah. I've, I've known they exist. Yeah. I just like metal work, right? Yeah, yeah you're um, in that world. So yeah, you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how did you get involved with that whole thing? You know, we talked about tools and buying old tools and fixing them. Like, how did you get involved with that? The Randall, that's a different story. <laughs> I guess it's, it's a big story, but uh, it's, Let's go. <laughs> it's, uh, it was a kind of natural progression, really, from having the old, old the Beetle, the rusty cars, mm -hmm. rusty camper vans. I imported a couple of cars from the States mm -hmm. um, that they inevitably all needed welding. So I was, I was kind of taught myself to weld. Mm -hmm. Again, no training, didn't to learn that at college. Yeah. Like I literally bought an old Clark, the blue Clark MIG welder yeah. from the boot sale for a yeah. fiver, second <laughs> hand. <laughs> yeah, five pounds, bought that with a little white disposable gas bottle. Yeah. As soon as you put the regulator on, they leak and then you, yeah. it's empty and you've wasted a tenner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> two squats out, yeah. Go yeah. On, yeah. <laughs> As I just, was just on my dry, dry parents' driveway, welding bits of scrap together i'd go to the cycle round to the industrial estate go for their scrap bin out the front probably shouldn't admit that but yeah <laughs> and then just come back and just weld practice welding stuff together mig welding mm -hmm. that led on to restoring the car not restoring repairing the cars kind right. of getting them i've never had like a fully restored car they've always just been like on the road yeah, <laughs> like, right. you know welding bits panels and stuff like that and i think welding it like welding fabricating making panels is eventually going to mean you need to make your own panel and that panel is inevitably at some point going to have a compound curve. Right. Making a curve panel in one way with that is easy. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, roll it through, you get one curve. But to have that compound curve and like a patch on the bottom of a seal or a wing with a, you know, it's got shape to it and you need to add that shape, you need a wheel. Mm. There are other ways with big hammers, power hammers and things, but it's like the, one of these would be the way. So it was kind of natural progression really of like, and probably that is to blame partly as well which clearly needs a lot of work but <laughs> it's like I need to I want to learn it and it was again so it's just like I found Jeff Moss who is an absolute master of it mm -hmm. went down and spent some time with him and just absorbed as much as I could yeah learn how to do it and learn well, the basics of the, the rules basically yeah and it was just that was it from there really I just wanted to figure it out and learn it just for practical reasons everything I learn is always sort of for a, a practical purpose right yeah. in a way so there's a reason why I You've had a stumbling to, block, so I now need to get over it. Like the mill. Yeah. I need to make parts for the Ranala, so I needed to learn how to use a mill, and mm -hmm. I needed a big lathe for a certain size to machine the lower hand wheel. So it's like I needed, so everything is out of necessity. Yeah. It's not, I don't sort of very cautious with just buying random stuff. It's like that's not so really needed. Yeah. It's yeah. Like I've got to really need it and need to learn to use it for a purpose, mm. which is an interesting thing, I think. It's like if you're just you buy a lathe, like you were saying earlier, you buy a wood turning lathe, just messing around. If you're just messing around, you'll learn bits. But if you're trying to make a candlestick that size or for a, a reason or something, you're trying to do something, it, I find it, personally find it easier to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a goal. For sure. You're trying to there's achieve a, there's something. There's an end point, right? Yeah, you're, there's yeah. the goal you're trying to get to. It's like, yes, I've done it. Yeah. Because if you're just aimlessly making something, it's kind of, you don't take it in, really, as much. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I feel, yeah. That's just me personally. But yeah, so then, yeah. And then I, so I met Jeff, wanted a wheel, wanted to learn, but to learn the craft, you need a machine. Yeah. And I could not find one for years. Really? Literally about two years using social media, looking around. I, well, that's a lie. I found about 10. Various people got in touch. It was like, oh, I know where there's one. I've seen one, I've seen one. All of them were at the back of people's workshops with coat, just coats hanging on the wheel. <laughs> and then ev almost every single person would say, oh yeah, the old boy, whatever his name is, he used to use that, he's not with us anymore. He's now retired, he's gone or he's passed away. But uh, nobody would sell them. Oh, so really? everybody, really? yeah, so many garages and workshops have these machines sitting at the back of the workshop because they look beautiful. Yeah. And it's kind of a prestige, it's sort of like having one of these, it's like a cool thing yeah. to have in the workshop. And they're also heavy and hard to move. So it's like, and it gets pushed further and further back. And then I turn up, try to buy it off them. It's like, it's not worth the hassle. And yeah. they quite like having it. They know they're not going to get another one because they're super rare. Yeah. But no, they don't use them. Right. That's yeah. just like, I really want to learn to use it. Can you? It's just like, no, no, I don't want to sell it. No, we're going to, it's like, you know, many times we've seen 
classic cars on people's driveways. <laughs> so, do you want to sell it? Day. No, no, I'm going to restore it. So, like, sure you are. Yeah. <laughs> 20 years later, you drive past. It's like, oh, no, you've got my dad, not my dad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day. And I, I do yeah. believe we will get round to it one day. I guess I'm a bit guilty of it now with the pause. But <laughs> 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 He's got a beautiful old BM and it just sits there. And every time he says it, I'm like... I want to believe you'll get round to that. Is it yeah. outside, going no, 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 rusty? No, he has, insane. he's kept it inside, Fine. he's kept it really that's good. That's not so bad, that's okay, we'll let him and off that's then. why yeah. I trust that he will get round to it exactly. one day. If he's giving it the space indoors, <laughs> uh-huh. okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. it's when they go outside and they, they just sit with, back in again. with no cover, it's never coming back in again, no. it's going to get worse and worse and it's just like, oh, I'm going to get round to that one day, it's like, let someone else finish love it. it, let someone yeah. else do it and finish it. And I got so frustrated with that, so it's like all these machines, I want to learn, I was one of many that wanted to learn, and yet there are other machines, but the kind of Ranler is the one, the one you want. It's the kind of Rolls Royce. It's, there's, right. it, the name has got a, a presence. It's kind of they've got a history of being in the industry known to be the best. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I wanted. But nobody would sell them to me. They all had them and they wouldn't sell them. But nobody was using them, and it's just depressing. It's so it's really sad. They're all just sitting out there, going rusty, sitting there not being used. It's just like so. I'm now trying to do something about it, mm. basically by remaking them. Yeah. Really, it's just as simple as I want more of these to exist in the world. Yeah, I just want, well, I don't want the craft. I've kind of become quite passionate in the way it's like I don't want the craft to die out. Yeah. It's like there's Jeff Moss that taught me at MPH Motor Panels. There's really not that many people left in the country or the world. There's a few, but less and less. Mm. Like as, as experienced as him with the amount of knowledge, the lifetime's worth of experience using one of these. Yeah. There's less and less. And I think we're at a really critical point where we need to inspire new people to come in. Yeah. So I've been working with uh, the Heritage Crafts and we've just cool. put it for this year, it's on the endangered list. Is it? Yeah, oh, yeah. it's now an enda- officially in- endangered craft. Wow. So we've been working with them to do that. Um, and just, again, just trying to promote it, which is kind of bittersweet in a way, isn't it? But it's sort of, it's good that it's being promoted. And I try and, you know, uh, Heritage Skills Academy, I do a lot with them because they teach it. Nice. One of the only, there's, there are other, organizations doing bits but they have an amazing scheme where they teach coach building really yeah yeah it's fantastic i wish i think if i could go back i would have loved to have gone and done that gone through their building yeah yeah but through the heritage skills academy it's amazing so some of the uh, interviewed them at goodwood revival and some of the uh, some of the but they're not even apprentices well they're not they're not students they're apprentices they they sign on to their course but they get employed by an employer Right. right, Aston Martin, Bugatti, big names, like yeah, big yeah, yeah. restoration companies. So they're employed by the employer, but they do, they go to the Heritage Skills Academy split time. It's part of the time at the employment learning on the job, part of the educational side of it with the Heritage Skills Academy at Brooklands oh. and Bicester in Oxford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they, do, they deal with the teaching technical side of it and then they have day trips and they do this and that and the other and they, they work with the employer. So you're not a student, you're oh. a, really an cool. apprentice, you're paid. So, like, so I was literally speaking to like 18, 20 year old kids that work restoring Bugattis at like old historic cars, historic racing teams and stuff like that. And that's their job. And they're gonna finish their training course with the Heritage Skills Academy, have a qualification and have a full-time job at the end of it with that company. Sounds like the dream really, doesn't it? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and they've got- Where a, was that at Canoes uh, Day? Yeah, yeah I know. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's it, yeah. It's like, I wish I'd have known because they have a, an engineering side and a coach building side. So you can do coach building being the, the body, mm-hmm. well, aluminium welding, frame structure, making welding, fabricating, or the engineering side is all like hydraulic systems, yeah. brakes, steering, suspension, yeah, 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 yeah. all car restoration based stuff. So it's so good. It's amazing. That is so Absolutely good. Absolutely brilliant. We've filmed the video that their place is wandering around their facility there. It's just like, if you're into that kind of stuff mm. as a, late teens, early, I mean, they have sort of mature students, but it's like, my God, what an experience to do yeah. that. Yeah. Learn yeah. those skills. That, yeah, so that's... jealous. So it's like, from that jealousy, I think, has now... You've then has... built the thing that you wanted to do, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like, that's kind of spurred on trying to help them as much as I can and trying to promote them because like, I'm super jealous. I didn't get to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone else can because, yeah. you know, you've trying shared to, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Spread the word. Yeah, that's Keep promoting them so you can do day trips down there. That's, <laughs> it. that's really all I'm trying to do yeah. is just trying to spread the word because lots of people probably don't even know what they are. Mm. Really, I know you walked in and did and it was you both are creative people so you'd probably do more exposed to them but yeah. they're an odd machine and it's an odd craft and lots of people I don't like it when you see sort of rumours where it's like oh there's no it is a time consuming craft to learn yeah 
I'm still learning for sure. I'm nowhere near like proficient at it at, at all. It takes a long time to learn. It takes a long time to actually do if you're making a panel. Mm -hmm. So that it's hard to justify it as a financially viable job. Yeah. Yes. Lots of people get bitter about it. Be like, oh, nobody will pay for it. But it's like, it's, that is not true. There is so much work out there. Like Jeff, he's, he's got years waiting list of cars and you know, all this sort of stuff. And being creative with it, that makes a curved panel. Mm -hmm. That could be a lampshade. Yeah, right. A, light, a, scu True. a sculpture, structure, yep. yeah. a piece of a garden installation, a water feature. Mm -hmm. like a, you know, you could use it for like a bird bar. You could make it. It's your creativity is the limiting factor. If you think that they're just for making car panels, that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. There's all sorts of like, it, it's just a tool to shape metal. Yeah. Do what you can with that, you know. So it's like there is a whole world of kind of being an artist or creative and doing in the modern world. They're still super relevant. Yeah. It's trying to prove that. Yeah. Which is, yeah. There's that whole no one will pay for it. It doesn't really sink with me as well. I hear it all the time yeah. and I'm with you. But, and it, but you look at even just car panels, you look really notably at the, the Christopher Rungies of the world and who's the Australian guy we featured as well, the coach builder. There is still people making, yeah. do you remember his name? No, I'll come to him. I've got it in one of the editions down there. I'll, we'll show you. It's, yeah, I wonder um, who he is. There's a couple of guys, I'll put it in show notes for anyone listening as well. There's a couple of guys that are making these high-end cars with big waiting lists. Yeah. And they are selling out. Exactly. The, the, in the, the right, jobs are there. In the world, right world. And take Goodwood, uh, Goodwood Revival, for an example. It's like yep. all of those multi-million pound cars racing around, crashing, yeah. <laughs> are going to need fixing. <laughs> we went to watch the Revival and as soon as you see the Did first you? crash, you're like... This guy. Oh. Yeah, I took case mom and dad Robert there. Soon. I know. Yeah, I've spoken to him. Robert yeah, Simpson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yes. he, did, he went on a proper tour of the UK. He, met, he spent some time with Jeff. Yeah. Oh, did he? Have you been down to see him? No. no. Have no. you not? No. One day. One, One day, day for sure. Yeah, this stuff's good though. It's so good. Beautiful. It's His so pictures good. are nice. It's like, yeah. So he's, a, he's weird. I've been speaking to him on social media, on Instagram. So that onion base there on the floor, that cast iron thing. Yep. Um, that's, he's got an original one of those. And he's put it on his Instagram. And it's like a, it's a well, the, the blue one at the end is finished. Mm -hmm. It holds a steak dolly. Ah, right. You know, like the kind yeah, of yeah. thing, the hardy hole, the yep. square tapered thing. It's a po tool post, basically, as you can change the top. And he's got an original one. And I've been speaking to him. He's been sending me, again, never met the guy. Mm -hmm. Random guy messaging me. I messaged him on Instagram. He's been so helpful sending me dimensions and measurements and sizes. And so I've got, made patterns and we're making, we're going to produce what Ranala tool post stands now. So you can, you know, That's awesome. as an extension of the machines. Yeah. yeah. So he's, and he's got, I think he's got a couple of them. Yeah. Jammy bugger. <laughs> At least he uses them. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, How yeah. powerful is that social media for stuff like that though? Right? It gets a bad rap in a lot of areas and I get why. But when you, if you're using it right, like ultimately we are what makes social media social media. If you exactly. use it like you're using it. Yeah. I haven't got, I mean, I not, haven't got a bad word to say about social media, but it's been so helpful for me. Oh yeah. For, it, we couldn't be here without it. No. Exactly, and it's 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 an amazing tool. It's yes, it's a, like it's relentless putting videos up every Sunday. We do a YouTube video every Sunday, five p.m., and we've done that for about two and a bit years now. Really, and it takes over your life in a way. It's like, what's <laughs> this video going to be? You know, like going through. But it's give and take, and the community it builds is so helpful. Oh yeah, so so helpful. Mm -hmm. And that's how I found my first Ranala because I started spreading the word on YouTube and Instagram, and then. People, word spreads and then there's just like someone just randomly sent me a picture of one covered in ivy in someone's garden it's like is that what you're looking for is that a ranala? is that what you're looking for it's like that is exactly what i'm looking for yeah, <laughs> yeah. where is this where yeah. is it i didn't know where it was and i ended up on a massive walk around in the rain trying to find the thing for hours <laughs> hours and hours really yeah it's that one i did find it in the end yeah that was the one that was yeah. covered in ivy yeah yeah oh, wow it was amazing but it's, it's the power of social media so many times like doing this well, you, you mentioned earlier, you see yeah. the, the, how many people had a go at me about not really rebuilding the engine. I was but in Stitches the other day watching <laughs> that, and it was just like the whole video starts with just like comment after comment after comment of build the bottom end, and I'm like, yeah. Man, All if right. he doesn't want to build the bottom end, he doesn't build the bottom end. <laughs> I will say, you have... I, my skin has got a lot thicker mm. yeah. and leathery. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to have... That's required. It, it's, you, yeah, it is. Yeah. It really is. And anyone new, like John, that comes up and helps me, it's just like, when he first started coming, I was like, yeah, I'd want him to come and help. I've known him for years. It's like, come down and give me a hand. But it's not all roses, you know, yeah, like it's, right. there are, you've got to take it with a, not a pinch of salt, but you've just got to not take it to heart, yeah. which I was guilty of at the start. It takes a long time, especially starting a repair shop and all of a sudden going from nothing to like, yeah, vroom, all of a sudden. Right. And then you've got all this new sort of, 
pressure and yeah, lots of people messing you. And it's just about yeah, weird. I don't know whether it spurs from jealousy or whatever it is, but like people can have their opinion. I don't care. That's fine. Yeah. If that's they what wanna, you're like. Yeah, your opinion is like well. Let's just sort of look at it like there's some even some negativity about, around the Randallers. It's just like if people want to spend their efforts being negative and putting me down, then that's fine. But I'm not going to let that deter me from my mission of what I'm doing. You're like, the best you thing do, about it. You do your thing. Best thing about it is the algorithm that's looking at reach, likes, engagement. Doesn't They're all know commenting. It yeah. doesn't know if it's negative <laughs> Thanks, or positive. Thanks, keep giving it. <laughs> yeah. It's good for me. Yep. It doesn't yeah. know the difference. Yeah, but it's a, it's a good tool. It's a good thing to have. Like Even like knowledge, people sharing knowledge. Yeah. Good way of... You can just ask a question and people will people will be willing to help. Mm. Yeah. Some say it in a more rude way than others, I will admit. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the help is there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So what would you say to any of the younger makers that are because that is something that we certainly notice people do struggle from. Like, oh I'm just getting slated here, like I'm just coming off it. And and we all know it's like one slating comment for every ten good comments, but that one That's really the one sticks. you remember. I know yeah. it's, it's so way, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's the way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think you need to be, especially if you're a maker. I mean, people criticise what I'm doing all the time, the way I'm doing stuffing, and why are you using an adjustable spanner and everything like that? It's like well, whatever. Because I had it in my pocket. Because I'm yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> convenient. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to film and yeah. do all of this and everything yeah. else. But um, I think it's it's being a maker must be tough because it's your product and it's your well, I guess I feel the same with the Randallers when there's a bad word said about them I get it hurts there's a bit you of you in them yeah there's a lot a lot of like years worth of work and development and money and time and mm. you know from a team of people and there's a responsibility with it and if you're making this product you're putting it out there and for people it's very easy for people to just kind of knock it but you've got to be a bit stubborn I think in a way and relentlessly kind of don't let, like you go to the craft fair, you don't make any money, you don't sell anything. Don't let that beat you. Mm -hmm. Try not to dwell on that. But like, okay, try and learn. It's, there's always a positive, like what you said earlier, there's always a positive spin on something, mm -hmm. a positive way to take it. So like maybe that wasn't the market for me or maybe you met somebody at that craft fair that was really helpful and then, you know, you built a new friendship there or there's always something positive to take. So it's just like, don't, don't dwell on the bad stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really? As hard as that is. As hard as it is, but... Yeah, yeah. It as is. hard as that is. Yeah. That, that is the advice, though, I think. It's like, just try and take it positively. It's hard, and it's so hard. Yeah. I've, seen, I've seen messages come through, and I'm, I'm pretty thick-skinned. I'm very lucky that way. Yeah. But I've seen messages come through and just seen Kate's face sink and be like... Oh. All right, right. Put the empathy hat on here. Like you know, this is <laughs> this is going yeah. to be rough because, and it is. But like to anyone listening, like remember, everyone's just doing what they can do. Yeah, and doing their best, right? And if it, they, yeah, you, it's, it's it's hard. I don't know. I don't think I'm the best person to try and explain how because I'm not that good at it. Because <laughs> I spent the first few years as like I would get really. It does. It's hard. Mm. But well, then you're stuck I'm, at it. Yeah, exactly. It's stubbornly kind of just carried on and made it worse for myself by starting a YouTube channel and then now doing another, you know, so making it worse in a way by promote, putting myself out there more. But I kind of, you get used to it in a way. Yeah. And you, it's not, it's not just, you, you, it's putting a spin on it, trying to see in a positive. Like you say, like there, there are loads of people saying positive, negative comments, but they're commenting. Yeah. Yeah. There's more engagement. They're engaging. Yeah. They're engaging. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So not that everyone, anyone wants negativity Bad, about them, but yeah, it's. So what's the plan with the Randalls now? You've obviously you made one for yourself. You yeah, just want well, more to be out there. You've you've helped start this course. Is it just a case of getting more out there in the world? Basically, yeah. So after years of make, like designing, developing, we had it. We had the that one three D scanned. Mm -hmm. Draw well, it's quite actually quite funny. I tried to use technology for the first time. Got it like it scanned and had three D drawings made by Paul. The guy down the road, really, really talented guy. Mm. Went down there, measured it all up, had 3D drawings to scale, beautiful. Went to the pattern makers. Uh, they said, oh no, get the machine up here because I wanted it to be exactly the same. They didn't even open the 3D file. <laughs> <laughs> they literally just used just calipers and ruler. And just said, yeah, we just measure off this, this is better. <laughs> so I was going through that whole journey and there's a lot involved with them. But now they're done. And I'm really quite proud that I could, after so long, it's like they're done. I've actually got a saleable product mm -hmm. that I can trust and I can sell, you know, like confidently. Yeah. Because I gave, so I've got number one. They're all numbered, the new right. ones. So nice. I've got number one. Jeff's got number two. He was the guinea pig. And we've been down there a couple of times and kind of made tweaks and modified bits and changed yep. the top wheel and stuff like that. It's development. So yeah. I wanted, he's had it for over a year now and uh, used it every day. Students have used it. Really? All the time. He's used it every day. He's built numerous kind of lotuses and jags and all sorts of things on so it. So if there was anyone to use it, it's him. Getting a nod from Jeff meant a lot. 
You know, nice. it's, like, it's a real special thing. So that, nice. and then also getting one in Aston Martin Works, Newport Pagnell. They've got an original, and they've now got one of my new ones next to it, and they're wheeling all their coach building team there. That's cool. Getting a kind of nod from them and Jeff is it's quite nice. So mm. then I kind of feel comfortable that it's okay because there's a, there is a responsibility with them because yeah. Granola has a name, a reputation. I guess is probably the right way of saying it. It's like it's um, it's not a new brand. I'm not making a product and calling it Dom's whatever. Yeah. It's a Ranola, and I own the company now of mm-hmm. the Ranola company, and I'm they're like continuations, and it's carrying on. You don't that want to be heritage. the knockoff guy. You want to be the he's doing it yeah. right. They're, yeah, for the last eighty odd years, they've been known. They've built the reputation as being the best in the world, mm. and it's important to me that the new ones carry that on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It has. They kind of have yeah. to. Yeah. yeah. You know, because they say Ranler on them, so they mm. need to be as good, and they are. I could, which is quite a nice thing to say. So yeah. they're done. The big ones are done. Nice. That's an old one, but that's new. There's various new ones. It's exciting um, to see it all come together after so long. It's after so long, and yeah. uh, it's been honestly, it's been a journey. It's been fascinating, <laughs> yeah. financially crippling. Yeah, well, <laughs> really good project. Project there's is, a reason yeah. why, yeah, but there's a reason why these have not nobody else has made them because it's not worth it financially, <laughs> which is another terrible business decision. But <laughs> it's, it's not about it's not always about the money, but yeah, yeah. But they're done. They're good, and that's now. So there's like, what's next? Mm. Instead of just sort of sitting as just like these are cool, I'll just sell these now because it's. I found that. They're a big investment. They're a big, they take up a lot of space. They're heavy. You need a workshop to have one in, really. They're like a big thing. Yeah. The whole point of the project was to try and save the craft and try and inspire people to get into the craft. But so they need the machines to actually learn the craft. But it's a big machine. Yeah. And I found that lots of people went on courses and wanted to do it, but ended up buying a cheaper, small machine, fabricated, but which don't work as well. They just don't work yeah. as well. So the next phase is making small ones, yeah. half size, yeah. just under half size, but it's like a bench top sort of put in your shed, put in your workshop, mm. put in your single more garage. More practical for mm. people. More practical, more that achievable. That was a sales pitch. It's like your single garage. Your yeah. Single, yeah. Your, <laughs> literally your single garage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that one over there could be yours. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first one. I've only got that a week or a couple of weeks ago. That's the very first. It's very cool. Small yeah, one. That's cool. Yeah, it's very, very cool. I'm really, I'm really chuffed, but that is now a whole other journey of development of making sure because it's called a Ranala again going off of what they so they'd never made half sized wheels so I'm kind of this right. is a modern which is slightly old for me kind of like making something new it's been mm. the last few years replicating historical pieces to every little detail and now this is sort of a different journey because it's it's your journey now it's like mo- you yeah it's new yeah, right it's like the modern yeah. yeah but it's more relevant today because I think it's more achievable for people the situation we're in there's more chance people are going to use one of those or buy one of those and use it. It's an entrance level one. version, isn't it? Someone might get hooked on that and be like, yeah, I need to buy a garage. I don't know the, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I don't know the word though. I can't quite figure out the word because it's not entry level or like a beginner. It makes it sound no. like it's, it's not a battery drill, right? It's, a it's the same cat. quality as the original wheel. Yeah. So it's like it's not a big, it's not a training wheel. It's like a, I don't know, I don't know what it's called. I don't know yet. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear about it, is it? It's it kind of. It's still need the experience. It will perform like, as yeah. well as a real full size wheel. It's just smaller. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not like a beginner's wheel. You could use that to make as nice a panel as you could on a full yeah. size one. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. To be continued. Yeah. Yeah. To be continued. I hear the, I hear the issue in that though. Because it'd be so easy to mismarket it as effectively not a knockoff, but like a smaller version that then implies it's it's lesser. It's, it's lesser, not, yeah. It's just lesser in volume and space. Exactly, and yeah. money, yeah. And money, yeah, yeah. right. But mm. yeah, so that's that's the next next chapter for Ranler, which is is exciting. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Is there a pressure and an onus that comes with that? I mean, you alluded to it earlier with owning the name now, but now there's a pressure and onus that comes with reproducing them. There must have been a huge pressure, like, oh, I'm going to do something else, something different, but with that same name. Right? Yeah, it is. It is. And I do feel the pressure in a quite a big way. It's just like, it's, it's history. It's mm. literally like a massive history. The Ranala started, they made these wheeling machines, the Ranalas, for, well, well, for the war, make, yeah. to make Spitfires. They, des- they literally, the design of them, they were coach builders building cars, and the, the, during the start of the war, they, needed, they got the contract from the government to make panels for airplanes for spitfires and hurricanes and things so, so there was a certain panel that they couldn't make on because wheels existed before ranlers mm. but there were more machines more right. they had like you know like they weren't quite as curvy looking mm. 
and they were made for a purpose and, so, and that since then they've got a reputation and by taking over the so I've never done that sort of building Dom's set design or Dom's whatever I do is one thing but it's like new that's just me but but buying a brand having a like buying into an existing name is a weird thing yeah that has yeah. a reputation in it I know it's niche and weird but in that world it's very well known that anyone that's especially seen, on this island yeah yeah like especially here they yeah. build a, well, all a over brand the world that, well yeah all over the world but like you're doing it here you've not bought it it's not like the Royal and nothing against Royal Enfield but it's not like the Indians then bought Royal Enfield's name and and it is the same brand as well I suppose it is the same thing isn't it like you're carrying you're on that the same, heritage isn't it trying yeah. to change it's the same yeah but you're then it's, pulling the same heritage through as well aren't you yeah but, and they were all the originals were all made on the south coast all made in obviously all made in, yep. in, in the UK and I feel it's been a nice journey following in that those that's I mean they're expensive but everything is made here Mm. By little people, the 3D designer, the engineers doing the turning. I mean, they're CNC now, but they're it's still supporting all the local businesses. All the local yeah. people, the pattern makers, the foundry, yeah. the all, every person that's involved is in the UK. The foundry, all the you know, everything is made here by little artisan. I mean, some bigger than others. The foundry is big, but it's kind of like it's it it's, it's, be, right? it's still <laughs> privately owned. Yeah. It's still small, like just Chris there and a few people. Mm. It's like. And it's, it's a big thing. Like I could absolutely have got the castings and the parts made abroad, mm. probably a lot cheaper, but it was never about that. It was no. trying to keep true to the, the brand and the name and yeah. make it as, as good as they, they, they once were. Yeah, that was obviously important to you. Yeah, it yeah exactly. So what about the YouTube journey? That's a journey in itself. I, I'm always like, we're obviously building up the YouTube because ideally we want to build a big platform that then anyone that's on it gets that, that great exposure. Because yeah. that's, that's what our mission's all about. And I always kind of half-heartedly, not half-heartedly, full-heartedly, but I'm always quite cautious in recommending other makers, like, why don't you try this? Because if I find them fascinating, I'm like, other people find you fascinating, people yeah. will watch it, it's a good income stream, it's a good exposure stream, people will then be led to your products, but it's a lot. It's a lot, <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot. I mean, it, it's a, for me, it was something I never thought I would do. I mean, to be honest, never being on telly in general, be yeah. in front of the camera. I've never thought I would do. I was very happy holding the setup behind the camera. <laughs> yeah, we, should, we <laughs> should see all of this up to this point and going forward until we delineate the next chapter is you'd never been on TV. No. Yeah. No, I never wanted to. You're the guy to. in the shed. Yeah. yeah. In the, here in the workshop, yeah. making the sets, making the props. Yep. Very, like, spent a lot of time in film studios and photo studios, yeah. but never on camera. Yeah, <laughs> right. Always, yeah, I've gone by then. I've done my job. Mm -hmm. It's like, there you go. Over to you now. Yep. You can do the glossy bit. I'll, I've done that. I'll go back to the yeah. workshop. That's that me. was my life. That's yeah. me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the same. So over to you now. Yep. That works. And I'll come back at the end and derig it and take it yeah, apart. Right? Yeah. yeah. So it's been a very interesting shift being on camera. And then as I was saying earlier, making it worse for myself by then starting a YouTube channel. But there's two, I guess two reasons for it, really. It sort of started partly lockdown. Mm -hmm. At the start of lockdown, we finished filming Repair Shop. And I was just like, we've been talking about it. I mean, Dan, who, Dan Cross, super talented guy. He filmed Repair Shop for years and he edits all the videos for me. Right. Films when he can, he's busy, but he edits every single video for me. So it's both, we're kind of in That's it together, cool. basically. Um, we were, we'd sort of be plotting at lunchtimes at Repair Shop, being like, oh, should we do a YouTube channel? We should do a YouTube channel. We should do it. Come, right. He loves filming. Well, I like creating. We like making stuff. It's a creative, it is a very creative experience. Mm. I really enjoy making the videos. That's what I was on the phone to earlier. It's just like, we're going to do this. Like, what we filmed yesterday, I kind of have, a, it's interesting. I have a journey of what I film, how I see it going, send him all the footage, and he doesn't know what I filmed and pieces it together. And sometimes it's like, oh, I didn't even think like I, it go a different way it's like yeah. it's, it's a really yeah. nice creative process that I really enjoy and that, it's like any craft really you've got to enjoy doing it because it's not financially worth doing even now yeah. two and a half years in 90 odd thousand followers it's still not financially worth doing really no, really? no. Okay. it's still not it's right. still, I think it's partly because the content I make is expensive doing up a bike it's like the, if you account for all of that and this place yeah right. this is true if you're doing a podcast and you're filming it and put that on there, obviously that's not, this kind of maybe makes more sense. And if you're yeah. a maker and you're just filming the process, but you're selling the product, yeah, that makes complete sense to do. Right, so it's the cost of the content, not the cost of doing it that doesn't make it financially sensible. Yeah, yeah. it's because it's right. everything I'm making is like, I'm not selling things. It's like, it's just my bike. I'm just doing, yeah. it's just, but this is expensive and all the things I'm doing are expensive. Mm. And it's just so, it's, if you account for all of that, it's absolutely just an expensive hobby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
but it does make I think it's good advising people to do is because it's a creative thing it's nice mm. to do mm. you've got to enjoy doing it though yeah yeah, yeah. It takes over your life yeah it really does and that's you with another editor as well and I'm not even editing it. That's what I mean. Sorry, yeah. I, that's yeah, you I'm with just an editor. I'm just, yeah. yeah, I'm just flapping around filming myself all the time. But, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it, yeah, it was one side of that. And then I think the other side of the wanting to do it was off the back of the repair shop because so many people would message me desperate. Have you seen the repair shop? Yes. Yeah, it's quite, like, if you're interested in the nuts and bolts of the repair, mm-hmm. bits, you know, so you, sometimes people are left wanting more. Yeah. You know, there's only so much. But well, they've only got too much, so much TV time. I'm yeah. sure you guys would love to produce hour-long episodes. Yeah, like, exactly. Multiple hours. Yeah, of we're like, as frustrated as the people watching. Yeah, of course we, we just went so long doing all that stuff and mm. they didn't use any of it. So we get as frustrated as the people watching. It's like, but how did he do that? All of a sudden it's red. Like, he yeah. didn't, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like, we need to make a, let's do YouTube and show all of the boring stuff. Because I'm oh, doing right. it here anyway. I was, yeah. I was still here. I was there at the repair shop filming there and then I'd come here at the weekends and be doing the Randallers, doing the bike, making doing the Porsche, working on stuff here. So I, yeah. I could just be filming this and show all of the nuts and bolts and the boring bits that we can't, can never quite make it onto telly. Mm. And that seems to be quite well received. Yeah. But that's kind of evolving now into a, now it's sort of gaining a bit of momentum. It's nice to have as a platform, similar to you guys really, I'm trying to use it in a positive way to promote as, as building, as using it as a platform to promote craftspeople. That's why like the whole Ranella journey has been really lovely because I've gone off and met the pattern makers and, in their shed, in their garden, who would, don't have social media, you know, like all these people that are hidden away. Having YouTube opens, has opened for me, lots of doors into places mm-hmm. to show them off, yeah. really, yeah. To, to, to celebrate what they're doing and let make other people aware of how, how amazing that these people are. That, the, yeah, yeah, they're all hidden Nobody away. knows that. Yeah. Knows so many people yeah. say, oh, yeah, that craft is done. Nobody's doing that. It's like, well, they are. Yeah. You just don't know it. Yeah. They're out there. They're just hidden away. Yeah. So it's, it's a really nice platform. I'm finding it's really nice. It's, got more, it's very rewarding being able to give the people their, their, little, their moment. You know? I'll, I'll, I love it. I absolutely love it. Like yeah. Kate and I... I can live for can it. tell you that you both like, it's exactly not, it's it the isn't same. financially viable no yeah. exactly <laughs> but I love it I love it I, 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 I get no bigger buzz than like college overseeing in a couple of weeks that someone that was like oh since I've been featured in your magazine I decided just to take the leap and go full time and you're love like it. yes good on you yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. that's, that's success that's success to me well, partially like, yeah. for what we've done for the hard work they've put in yeah. Yeah. but I feel like they're the ingredients if we can be the catalyst. Sometimes it's just a nudge, just yeah. a little bump in the right. A bit of confidence, like, yeah, oh, right. you know, maybe yeah. I can do this. Yeah. But yeah, just the fact that you're filming and chatting a bit, like having you guys over for lots of people is, is, is maybe intimidating and daunting. And they're like, yeah. I've done that. Maybe I will do a craft fair, you know? Yeah. I've done yeah, that. Yeah, right. Like, I mean, the, book, the, book, the, book, the first time I've been published in actually in print, it's like, yeah. it's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. I remember like my first, when I was doing set design, it's like the first, I've still got a palette of stuff up there, of, like old publications of like stuff I've been in and work's yeah, yeah, been yeah. in. It's a nice thing to have yeah, something it's... physical that your work is, yeah, you know, right. like Lucinda in, the, in, that, in this one. It's yeah. like, it's lovely. Mm. Yeah. It's, a, it's a special thing. So I mean, it's good what you're doing. Thank you. And Thank you. We yeah, appreciate it. It works. It's a nice, it's nice to be able to do it. So now you've started that, that channel and you're obviously very passionate. Do you, do you feel a responsibility to people to, or to crafts? crafts or people, I suppose that is the question, to keep pushing them forward. And, and how do you deal with that responsibility? Because that's certainly something we feel like we can't stop now because we're on this train. Like this train is moving. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then you're like, oh, we'd be so much better stacking shelves in Tesco. But you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? but you're like oh, we'd be bored yeah. though, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah, we'd be bored. <laughs> um, but then there's a responsibility and an onus you put on yourself. How do you work that one out? I think it's, I don't think about things like that too much, really. I think I just kind of like, it's just, it, again, positively, just like it's the more, I just enjoy doing it and the more I can do, it's hard because my schedule is so busy. I don't have as much time as I'd like. Yeah. I wish, I guess I could just do, imagine if I could do YouTube all the time. Yeah. Like similar to you, travel around, film people, show people, have, make stuff, cool, make cool things. Yeah. And that's the job. Yeah. But then the other side of that is make it at market, which is the new show, which is out now. When's it, do you know this should be coming out? Uh, probably three weeks time we've got three other pod four other podcasts to put out before this so yeah about three weeks time oh fine well it'll be finished yeah. by then but it's you can watch it on catch up but yeah, yeah it's that having that we'll probably put a, we could cut a clip 
we'll put a clip out now because well, then at least that gets it circulating a bit more. Yeah, yeah. I can send you the we'll pre-titles. Yeah, send us the clip. pre-titles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll I've do got that. that, so I'm going to do that. That'd be cool. For sure. Thank you. That's a that's a from being on telly. That's a new show, and I am equally proud of that. Mm. It's a real special thing being part of that, and I think that comes with that responsibility of of helping people and kind of because and you get that satisfaction you were just saying about someone saying I've you know from being in your magazine I've now quit my job and I'm doing it and that's exactly what so many of them on that show it we're making a tv show a beautiful tv show but it is changing people's lives yeah it's real yeah it's not just a glossy glamorous kind of show that's like just tv Jack Waygood was just like isn't he taken aback by it yeah, yeah. He, he is, he's absolutely insane but there, I always felt there's and not to talk ill of him, but I always felt like without that, without the make it and market, like would he have ever been discovered? The direction yeah. it takes yeah. you, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. The, 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 the wobbly push. man that he talked about, yeah. when they, he, so the process works, they come down, I meet them at the gardens for, initially, they're very scared, terrified, of, like cat in headlights of being on camera and filming the film crew and it's all interviews and questions and they're set to work, I set them challenges. It's a bit like of a whirlwind for the first few days. <laughs> then they go away for two months, two and a bit months and work with their mentor to try and actually get things into shape. And Jack turned up with that wobbly man on the first day mm. and I tried to bite off of him and he wouldn't sell it. Really? <laughs> yeah. I was like, how much do you want for it? I was like, all right, I'll have it, fine. And he really, like, he wouldn't, he, well, first he wouldn't give me a price and then eventually he did. I think he went and spoke to his mentor and it's just like, oh, just try. Just, just, and, and he wouldn't sell it. And he went away with it in the van. I was like, that is where he, that's, that's why this isn't a business. Yeah, I know he, that's yeah. a bit different because he had a bit of a, quite a sentimental attachment to it. Yeah, yeah. But then after his two months on the, through the process, he brought it back at the end. Yeah. <laughs> and you bought it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I love nice. that. But it's going through that journey, seeing people evolve in such a short amount, two months really, as a craftsperson is a blink of an eye, no yep. time at all. So what they're able to do in such a short amount of time with the support of the production company, me, the mentors, the, the whole experience, mm. is such a nice feeling. Yeah. yeah. Just chatting to them, they, when they come back and it's like, how have you got on? It's a kind of summary. How's it been working with your mentor? Did you go to craft fairs? Did you make any money? Have you re- Some of them have completely ground up, rebuilt their business. New name, new website, started literally from scratch. Yeah. And, it, and they're standing there really proudly talking about what they've made and with confidence, Yeah. which is night and day to when they first started, when I first That's met amazing. them, and they were kind of sort of sheepishly being like, you know, I don't really go to, I don't think anyone would be interested in what I do. It's like... Yeah, they will. They are. <laughs> yeah. 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 They, they really there are. Is, trust oh. me, yeah. Billions of people on this yeah. planet. Yeah. It's just the mindset see. of like, yeah. creators. I was the same. Yeah. Like, who, who wants to, you Nobody know. wants to know about, yeah, my Jam. chairs. I don't, yeah. <laughs> do, do they? I don't know. Yeah. And then you go to a couple of craft fairs and don't sell anything. because like, oh, you see, nobody does care. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You need just, to give it time. Yeah. To give it time. Yeah, yeah. giving it time, right? That's, yeah. that's the important bit. Give it time. Yeah, yeah. You seem like a good fit for that kind of thing. Like, I know TV was never on your horizons or never what you thought. But certainly the make it a market and from the conversations we've had with with Jack and a couple of other people DM'd us off the show that we need to get back to and good, go see good. him. Yeah. You clearly love it. Like it yeah. must be very fulfilling. It's it's very it's I'm not gonna say it's easy, that's the wrong word to use, but it's an absolute pleasure. The yeah. Filming is just like it's like the cameras might as well not be there. I'm just wandering around a beautiful gardens, chatting to craftspeople. <laughs> really? Yes. That's kind of, yeah, that's yeah. like, this is not, yeah, I don't have to, I'm not on the tools. I drive up there in an empty van. I don't have to bring anything with me. I'm just going around chatting to people, hearing their stories of what they're up to, what they're doing, and where they need help and kind of peace. It's, it's, it's brilliant. It's Love so it. nice, isn't it? Yeah. How did your life just turn upside down when the TV approached? Because you made the... For the repair shop, that was your first thing, wasn't yeah. it, in TV? Yeah. And that was, came from making a sign for the shop. Exactly, yeah. And it, there was, it was a gradual process because the first series of repair shop was only very short and quite hidden. It took a few series, a year or so, before it kind of gained mm. big momentum. But there was a, quite a pivotal point where I was, it was a short filming series, so I was involved in that, then the part-time, then the second series a bit more, third series more, and then it became full-time. And I was still trying to do the set design. So I was trying to juggle both because it's like, I've spent 10 years more building this business. I don't want to let go. It's like this yeah. TV stuff. I don't really want to be on telly. I don't know this is, you don't really know. But there, there was a, a jumping pivotal point of like, the set design is being compromised. Both, I guess, were being compromised because I'm knackered. Yeah. I'm trying to work eight days much. a week. Yeah, right. <laughs> and 
I'm letting clients down because I can't do the set design jobs. Clients that I've been working with for years and built up relationships with and then they could trust me, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I can't, I'm filming, I can't do it. Mm. Oh, bugger, then they're gone elsewhere, then you're off. Yeah. And then also, and it was just like, I was like, whenever I tend to do something, whatever it may be, I think I tend to be committed and jumping with both feet. I think if you're going to do something, yeah. do it properly. Yeah. And I was being split and I was like, both are kind of being a bit kind of, mm, I need to just do one or the other. And that, it was at that point, then I got an agent who was like, right, we'll do the TV. This opportunity is here. Just say yes, let's do it. It might be gone in a year and I might regret it. Yep. Who knows? But... But it's got you here now and you're, do you know what I mean? It was a good decision. But yeah. then saying it's a good decision, what could have been if I said no and was doing set design? I could, you know, yeah. don't yeah. know. Don't know. But you're enjoying it. But I'm enjoying this. So that was it's a good, good decision. It, uh, yeah, it was a good decision and it has opened up. It's, it's going in a nice direction now. Nice. You know, making a market wouldn't be here, so I wouldn't be doing that. So it's really nice. But it was a, it was a scary time making that decision to like, right, I'll do this yeah. full time. Because there's no security, really. It's like, yeah. Like series after series, but it's not. Does it still doesn't feel like a proper job? Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Like you don't really know. You're in the kind of hands of I don't really know a commissioner. <laughs> like, yeah, if it could all just go. Yeah, you and get then towards what? the end of it, and it's, it's your much the same. Because like. you've got that already. Yeah. <laughs> That's costing money yeah. to make. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if this goes, that really doesn't work. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Then I'll be in Tesco. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we can all work together, right? Great. <laughs> <laughs> but there is there is a worry with stuff like that, isn't it? And, but I suppose. But if we spend all our time worrying, then you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. You turn yeah. up and you present your best foot forward. Yes. In everything you do. Try and it's best. probably the best thing to the best advice to makers just try your best present your best foot forward and whether that works or not like the skills that you've developed there and the skills that you then bring forward that is that's the holy grail that's the gold that you bring with yeah but you've got to give it's like giving it your all yeah i think that's it it's like if you're kind of like which is i guess the makers are making it market it's like they kind of dabble do this but i've got to, understandably not, yeah. not, not not knocking them at all it's like they've no. got a full-time job they need to pay the rent but it's like you're kind of doing the hard time it's like the moment they kind of They've got the pressure from the mentors mm -hmm. and the show and the process. It's like, well, I've got to do it. I've got to yeah. do it. I'm going to have to stay up till three in the morning. We've got to do it. I've got to make all these pots to take to the fair to do that. You know, it's like, I need to do it because I'm on this train that's yeah. moving quickly. And yeah. it's like, I need to keep going. They give them that little push. And then they realize, I think then, not every time, but obviously you try hard, you jump in with both feet and you try. You need to, to succeed, yeah. really. Yeah, that's, like that's an interesting. Doing. It's the same oh, thing, really, you. isn't it? Like, it, literally, both of you fully committed, travelling around the yeah. country. Yeah. Literally getting itchy feet on Friday. We were told the carpet and the we flooring for the new house wouldn't week, be delivered yeah. until the month. moving house as well as we all moved. this. We moved house. Oh, my Just God. So day one, two, three, we ripped the house out and took the walls down we didn't want there. Decorator was in two, three, four. Ordered everything day five. Day six, we were told it wouldn't come to the sixth, so we were presented with an eight-day gap. So day seven, we got on the ferry to Europe. <laughs> it wasn't let's have a yeah, okay, let's have a rest. No, it's like where are we going? It was like we've nobody yeah. to sit and have a rest. Let's go. <laughs> so I don't know what went. rest is anymore. To I know. be honest, <laughs> me. I feel like I've ever met people that should live on a boat. <laughs> yeah. It should be you two. Like, I could see you on a boat. Well, we were going. We were thinking, you know, a van would be a perfect thing. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. I mean, that's big. Converting vans. That would yeah. be ideal, actually. That's that's a long wheelbase. Get a, oh, no, I'd love one. Camp <laughs> conversion, <laughs> solar panels going. on the roof. You can edit in there. Just keep going. Yeah, we've got Starlink internet already at the house. Just put that oh, straight on. Man. That's it. That's, that's what you need to one. do. Yeah. Get, yeah, van sponsorship. A DM. <laughs> get, there you the go. get in touch with your perfect, perfect clients here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You come here, do the van conversion here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. We'll video it all on Dom's yeah. YouTube. Oh, that would be fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. And then we'll go straight to the Euro Tunnel and, and we'll, we'll never see you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you'll see loads of videos of the van that look great. Oh, that's such a good idea. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> One day. Next One day. In, yeah. that's, the, that's the stretch goal for We Are Makers. Because I've got my own CNC machine, so I was like, You've I wonder how we can cut. So the interior is done. Yeah, so you can just cut out and do the van, but. Yeah. All, the, all the interior got all these dreams but oh. right now like this is this is what we're trying you to make you can do work. anything not everything. everything yeah I wrote a newsletter on that the other day you can do anything not everything at oh. least not at once that's so true that is so true somebody said to me before it's like because I'm a bit of a like this place can get overwhelming sometimes because <laughs> really <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you walk in and it's like there's projects everywhere I admit I've got lots of projects with everything going on there's a lot going on and somebody said to me before it's like if you actually step back away from all of that, that Porsche is going to take me years. Say, I don't know, 
five years, 10 years, however long it is. I'm, I've only got so many five year, 10 year projects left before I'm gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, and that was, when they said that to me, it was quite funny. It was like, actually that was a real moment of like, I'm never gonna finish all this stuff. It's not, I'm never gonna finish it, but do I want to spend my, the yeah. days I've got doing that and that? So I got rid of loads of stuff. Believe it or not, there was, yeah, there was more. the Porsche. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that will get, that is my dream car. That will get done. It will, but this first. I'll hold true. you to that. Yeah. I'll hold you to that. I'll we'll be like, if I've not right, seen it on yeah. YouTube in a, in a year, I'll be like, uh, Dom. Yeah. So you and many, many <laughs> others having a go at me about not doing yeah. a Porsche. <laughs> but I've got it digitally on the internet yeah. from now on forward. And it needs <laughs> to get done. It will. It will get done. Yeah. I'm sure it will. You mentioned there about the mentorship that Make It at Market brings. That feels like that would just be useful to every maker. Like, how, does, how do you think a maker goes out and finds that mentorship? Because man, I think that's what a lot of us are missing. But yeah, that's why the show is so successful mm. because everybody can't get it. Yeah, I think it's like, that's almost that like accountability of like. That's it. Yeah, of having someone that you, you know, you're not you rely. Report to. I report to. It's just a sanity check sometimes because yeah. lots of makers sit on that, like me included, sit here on your own. Mm -hmm. but so many of them it's like working my you know the kitchen table at home you're you're just you've got your shed and your workshop and your space they work on their own they're doing the thing on their own they don't really know is this the right shape vase am i making mm. do you like is this good is this nice you yeah. can be inspired you can go and i think that's it getting out there seeing go to exhibitions going to galleries going to fairs going just expose yourself to people and stuff and other things because it's very easy to get a bit kind of blinkered and mm -hmm. all you know just on, on, in, on your own stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. So if it wasn't for Make It A Market, how would you recommend makers go and find that? Like here's the real gold for makers I feel in this podcast is they're like, how do you go and find, we've, we've identified- Whatever your craft the, is. Yeah, we've identified that the, the mentorship is so important based on your experience. It but is. How do you go and find that? I guess you're relying on the community giving which I think they do. It's a, the thing is, it's, it's once you're in and you, you, yeah, it's a lovely community and mm -hmm. everybody is very will, very willing and open and giving, but you've got to, they've got to see that kind of spark. Yeah. They've got to see they that. You need to know that you're willing. That you're committed because everyone's busy. Mm -hmm. Every, all the craftspeople are busy. And it's like, if you turn up, I think getting out there, exposing yourself to more stuff, craft fairs, not even trading at craft fairs, but just going to craft fairs and speaking to people, mm. being bold enough to kind of, Give your card out. Have something that they can remember you by. Something can like it's it, it get, just meeting people. That's where I've I've the journey, the Ranella journey has. Mm -hmm. I've met some of, some of the one of the best things from that whole journey is some of the people that I've met on the way. Yeah. And still traveling around like the guys that made the tank for this bike. Amazing people. Absolutely brilliant people. It's just get it going like out there and traveling and meeting people getting in touch you're like can i just I mean I'm not, i don't expect every maker is going to have the ability the facilities to let people in and mentor them yeah of course but it's the mentoring can be just a conversation sometimes can't it yeah of just yeah. what do you think of this what do you reckon you know do you like this can what, how can i do this how about that and that can come from just a conversation a, a show a fair like just getting out there i think the main thing yeah. is expose yourself and expose I think yourself yeah yeah and yeah. be proud of what you're doing yeah yeah exactly yeah. and i think to go back to it the accountability the mentorship as well is one of the key certainly i feel one of the key factors you know i speak to um wilco most days motorbike builder out in the netherlands and it's just a hey look at this yeah. What do you think? Like, what do you reckon? Yeah. Exactly. It's what do you like, reckon? Yeah, am I and if I've not heard from him for like two days, I'm like, did you do that thing you said you were going to do? Yeah. Like having that back and, and we're really good at it in the house because we were able to be like, did you do that thing? Yeah. Or Kate's like, did you do all those things? Like, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but I will, I promise I will. I think that accountability is really important. Yeah. We, we, there's so many of us that just were in our little, it's why we're doing the retreat next year or trying to do the retreat next year. We're in our little bubble, yeah, doing our thing, doing your thing, and think you really come yeah. off for of here. It's hard, and don't take. I think take, don't take criticism. To try and take it as constructive. Yeah, because people are very you know, like you've understandably spent so long making this mug, and you're really pleased with it. But you take it to somebody, and somebody's like, "Yeah, the green's a bit. I don't know. Yeah, try this." So and you don't take it as you know. It's just also take it as their a opinion. Of, yeah, no, mean that yeah it's fact. exactly. It's someone else's opinion. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They don't have to like it. If you like the green, then that's cool. But <laughs> someone else likes that green. Someone else will like it. It's yeah. just finding them. It's that. It's yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. It's it's hard because it's different for every person. That's what I've learned a lot from meeting so many different craftspeople mm. on making it market. It's sometimes it's just their own confidence. You know, their own. They don't believe in what they're doing. Sometimes they're, they're 
sometimes it is like ability of actual doing the craft. They've learned it during lockdown, they picked it up and they'd need the mentoring with the skills, mm -hmm. which is interesting because that's a much easier thing to fix, I think personally, because you can go, there's so many courses yeah. West Dean, like other things I've mentioned, you can do an evening course, a weekend course. Lots of the the, the makers and craftspeople do courses, yeah. whether it's willow weaving, stained glass. You can yep. sign up for a course. I've done it yep. a lot. I've done, you know, like sign painting, gilding, revert with Dave, reverse mm -hmm. glass gilding, yep. wheeling. So I'm always signing myself up for courses. That's so mm. good, yeah. Love it. I'm doing stained glass next. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love stained glass. I know. So do Wait, I. do you see the podcast, the first podcast we've done on this trip where it's like photorealistic Ellen. portraiture stained glass. Oh, the painted glass where they fire. Oh, oh my goodness. Mate, I, it was, I've glass. seen a lot of beautiful things, but that was like, that is amazing. Yeah. Like, oh. It would have been amazing if it was a painting on canvas, but then you see it on glass. glass. And, it's just and like, then the light wow. comes on, you're like. <laughs> I was taking a bath. I was on a light box. You can yeah. see it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my see. goodness. But that's another craft that it's like, it's, you think it's historic and should be in a church, but actually, It'd be amazing in a house. That was yeah. exactly my comment on it. Like yeah. I've only ever seen stained glass anywhere near this level in a church. In a historic buildings. Yeah. 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 But it's not like this modern world. Like it's like it's, you can absolutely put it. You know. Who cares? And I think that modern that modern world look at it is what means those things will survive. Yeah. Like when people put the modern spin like on it. Like you're making that. Yeah. Like that now being bench top, it will allow, or people that are building motorbikes, like that's a modern reinsurgence thing. Like that'll allow these wheels to survive. To carry on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. So what's next? Or, better question, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? What would I do if I knew I couldn't fail? Yeah. What, whatever what I was going to do wasn't going to fail. Yeah. If you just knew categorically it was not going to fail. Lots. <laughs> He's like, we could have a Ranelor in every size. We could do big ones. Yeah, all. God, let's make a bigger one. Yeah, yeah. no. It would My be Porsche. <laughs> yeah. yeah, finish the Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice. I, I don't know. God, it would be really nice to have some kind of an academy of mm. sorts. Yeah. I'd really like that kind of like a, you know, like a, have you been to Bista Heritage? No. No, I've... you need to go there. You need to go to one of the Bista Scrambles. But it's like right. a complex of kind of buildings where there's all different <laughs> trades, mainly car restoration based. It's all okay. sort of car restoration based, all in a little village. Right. It's just like, imagine having like a, an, well, we can call it the Ranler Academy. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should get the domain name before yeah, this comes yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like, yeah, a, tra a way of, of giving back, of like, Build, having an academy, building something, a building something that can be left behind. It's just like a, a, a way that future Doms from Essex from the little town in South End mm. have got a way in to be exposed to I like that. all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, build the play. Build it would be a big old place. Victorian factory with a big chimney. Oh, you're right. The Ranler up the side, up the, <laughs> yeah. up the chimney. Yep. Big old critter windows. Yep. The gold writing that Ranler works or what yep. was it, Ranler Foundation or something. Yeah. And just a, yeah, beautiful building. There you go. Oh, you're so up much. You can always yeah. add it to your so list, much. you know. Yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> big old brick building, exposed brick, all that. That's it. <sighs> That's the one, isn't it? Yeah, big old, just a, a nice creative space where people can just have a go. Yeah, having a go, man. Yeah. People just being able to put their hands on some of this stuff. Because yeah. you can see all of it through a screen, but it's not the same as doing it. No, and so many crafts are one to, done like on their own. And that's what's nice about Repair Shop. It was one of the weirdest things being there because I'm welding together an old weather vane that's 300 years old neck on the bench next to me is lucia doing some painting conservation who's usually hidden in the depths of the vna working on the most insane horrendously expect like super rare paintings and i'm on the bench next to her and then chris shaw's over there binding a book making books and doing yeah, marble, right. all this other stuff and, and then it's just like it's being directly exposed to so many different crafts people and so many different situations and people and craft is an amazing thing yeah it's unique there's not a workshop <laughs> that doesn't that situation at the repair shop doesn't exist i don't think unless you've seen it anywhere so many different no. people come yeah, from no yeah. it's all it's a unique thing that they've created which is yeah. amazing yeah it's that big open bench space where you're doing everything like we see a lot of maker spaces where there's lots of different people doing it but they're still kind of in their space they're not it's not like one day. Yeah, because we cross over all the time. Yeah, and that's right. what I think as soon as you put like-minded creatives together, 
there's going to be, you know, there's... Sky's the limit. Yeah. yeah. And you would never think, I'd be working with Kirsten and her doing ceramic conservation. She needs a hand with making some metal bracket to support a yeah. sculpture or something. And it's like, all of a sudden, it feels just quite organic and quite nice that, you know, I'm now helping the ceramics conservation artist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, re it's a really cool thing. And so. it's really weird because the other things you get, like we all get excited about what we do as makers and makers obviously love what they do, but then the odd day that you go back and you've done something totally different, like jazzed on a different level about it. You're like, and do you know what I've done today? Yeah, like, yeah. I made a metal bracket, which I make every day, but I made it for a ceramic. But yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole this thing. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's mad. It's so, yeah, I, I'm in on the academy. I'm in. You're in? I'm in. I've got Let, the let's do it. Yeah. I, need to find, I need to find the building. <laughs> yeah. I need to find the building, the domain name. The... <laughs> but I've got a customer. Yeah, exactly. Kate, do you want to round up with your question? Yeah. Final. Oh, what God. advice would you give your younger self? My younger self. Oh, okay. Don't. Uh, grow this thicker skin earlier. Don't take to heart mm. all the so times, whether it's bullying in school or people knocking you down or, or even yourself knocking you down, being crap at maths and science and stuff. Like, don't beat yourself up and don't let other people, don't take it to heart. Yeah. Do your thing. I wish I'd learned that when I was younger. Yeah, yeah I was that, way for too, sure. yeah, it, like too many things got to me and I didn't do things mm. because certain reason whatever it was you know it's just like just don't yeah don't let in like 10 years time that's not going doesn't matter like what, no. what, anything that was said to you or... but what does matter is that you didn't do that yeah 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 because exactly. you somebody else was yeah <laughs> bullying you or doing something or just oh having man, it, or it's, just it's knocking so you true down. it's so true though isn't it like when you started we are makers like i i met and not a new kate i met an evolved kate once once this was working yeah because you there is a space for everybody yeah it's but then there. I'm sure you had people being like, no, nah, that's not going to work. That's not a job. You oh, can't yeah. do that. Oh, yeah, but there's a, when you find your thing, I think there's a newfound confidence, isn't there? Yeah. It's like, don't worry about me. But that comes with experience, I think. It's like mm. when you're at school, which, which is when it all starts, yeah. you, it, it's like you take, see, I personally, you know, it's like take on too much of people having a go at you, people, or you beating yourself up about not being good at things and mm. I was never good at maths or science, but no. I was always hidden in the graphic design or product design area. Exactly, like that. DT, that's it. Yeah. 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 But that's just as we are as creators. Yeah. But you were good at maths. Yeah, I do our maths now, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 Kate found maths. a mathematician instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you tell the numbers. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, you don't have to do it yourself. It's fine. <laughs> just marry one, it's fine. Yeah. Just crack maths and science, marry us. <laughs> yeah. oh. So we've asked loads of questions. Is there anything you want to cover before we round up? Yeah, what what, what van are you going to buy? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> who's who's going to sponsor? Yeah, is that true? Yeah. Vans are super expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Vans are expensive. I would do it in a heartbeat. I've got a good friend that I used to work with in a bike shed in Evan Cycles, and they he's now up in Aviemore. Took him what, and his family Evan up. Cycles? To, I used to work in Evan Cycles. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, As a bike mechanic through uni. And he's now way up in Aviemore, building vans for a living. And I often think the first thing I would do if I won the lottery would be... Buy that van, book a ticket. Yeah, Just that's go. what's next for you guys then. What's next for me? What's next for you? Ooh, uh, it's definitely more travel. 2024 is going to be, we well, have we had such a good time. 2025 will be a lot more travel. Yeah. 2024 will be a lot more travel. Somewhere in between this and 2025. I'm getting really excited. And I think I speak for both of us here. Really excited about all the different cultures and their look at making. Yeah. Because there's very little differences and they're all kind of coming at it the same way. Like, it's just people that just want to make a living off their work. That's the that's what it boils down to. Right. I just want to make a living doing what makes you me You know, happy. like on our American trip, we saw sign writers, saddle makers, ceramicists, who else? Engravers. Yeah, like all different saddle crafts. Makers. It's just like how, getting a look, like almost we're giving people like a look through the... But there's all those crafts here yeah. that you yeah. just said, uh -huh. but you've met them here and met uh -huh. them there. And they're very... Just different ways of doing business, different ways of doing mm. things, different tools, different ways of using tools. It's just giving people that different look on what's happening around the world. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. You need to, I wonder how you can bring some of that together. Yeah. You need a fair. <laughs> We've talked about it. You know, people, bring <laughs> the people from the States over, like mix yeah. the kind of like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you talk about your if you couldn't fail. We've talked a long time about big industrial building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big maker space, but with accommodation, so people could do, you know, guest guest appearances. I.e., you could 
be six months there, accommodations covered. Yeah, like, absolutely. But it's bringing all the different cultures and all the different craft for the same sort of thing as you experienced at the repair shop. Like, there's so much other stuff happening that you you can't not learn from. Yeah. For example, we're really trying to do a retreat next year where we bring like ten makers together from different crafts and they just chill out for a week. Yeah. Chat to each other, kind nice. of like because you get people in America who speak to people in the UK and they've never met. Before. No, more well, like when, me and the, the, uh, the yeah, exactly the guy there, yeah. So it's just a nice. Um, so not to make, mm -hmm. just to come and just chill out. Yeah. To try and combat the loneliness and yeah. the, some of the issues that come with that. I that's something that's really worth important. mentioning because I think it's really yeah actually so we've got actually anything serious that wanted to yeah. add. I think it's the mental health side of things mm -hmm. is worth touching on because I think me included, it's having a craft and having this place and having a something that I can do mm -hmm. helps so much. And so many people on Make It At Market, it's having the craft has completely saved them. Yeah. It re genuinely has saved them. Like they've had some, some of them have been through some real tough stuff and mm -hmm. having that found that thing is such a powerful, and, it, and seeing them talk about it and how passionate they are. And it's literally, they're saying like this, now I've found that I can do this and having the help that we've had, we can do it. It's changed my life. And that's a really mm, powerful, powerful thing. Yeah. You can't get more powerful. Yeah, than that. and how many no. how many other people out there? For every one person that's on the show, there's probably hundreds of people that have got similar troubles or their own troubles. Yeah. That having a craft, whether it's a you know, the, there's so many organisations with loneliness, mm -hmm. isn't there? Where there's and you getting it's a community, and we've both all agreed that like the actual crafting community is such a nice community it's, on the whole. Yeah such a good community so just to hopefully this can inspire people to whatever that niggly thing is like oh I used to love doing that you used to love doing that in school you probably pick it back up it. Yeah. pick it back up yeah. Get find a local group there will be a local group mm -hmm. oh, yeah. somewhere find someone have a go yeah. and get back into it and, yeah, yeah. It, it can help, really can help yeah. and you know like we talked about whether it's the, the big needing big space if there is maker space available for that or whether it's the ones that we're all jealous of where they can use a corner of a kitchen table and yeah. get started <laughs> just get started whatever it is use these use these again man whatever it is yeah yeah. use yeah. your hands for example yesterday we were at uh, a, a tool library yesterday in the middle of Brussels driving there it was, was a nightmare the German but, embassy yeah there's wow. a maker space building. there and How basically cool. you buy like you pay for your entrance and you can use whatever tools you want and they've got band saws tool, like big everything. machines like everything, everything you need can you everything. imagine having that and people who just want to get their hand just want to try it out and if it yeah. doesn't work it doesn't work but if it does it could change their expose life expose yourself to exactly. this stuff and just be just i'll just go there and hang out <laughs> yeah Absolutely. exactly just organize the wood store i'll bring for the them coffee like, yeah, yeah exactly I'll bring the coffee, yeah. Like, just come and chat to me <laughs> just have it yeah exactly two guys in there that last weekend they'd done they just joined. They'd done the course on how to use the big saw, ordered a bunch of rough timber, and they were just knocking it in, and they were going to make furniture for the house. Perfect. I was like, yeah, brilliant. And they just rent it for that time. They just rent it for that time. I love it. So that's so what, like that's a one month golden gym membership. That's what I should have done when I started the set design company. Mm. Rented a space in a bigger place, yeah. not just going on my own straight away. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a much more sensible financial decision, I think. To, but then oh, you that could be, be some advice. Or you might yeah. not be here. Yeah. 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 Wicked. That's Dude, I've really enjoyed it. Thanks yeah. so much for reaching hey, out to us. Not at all. It's been awesome. I enjoyed the wee shot on the, the sheet metal. I might have to sort the guys out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. I'm glad, glad we've inspired you now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sort out of a little mini ranola. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I'm going to build some stupid stuff. Yeah, you were <laughs> annoyingly good at it. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. He's just saying that because he's on camera. No. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank I appreciate you. it. Really so lovely. Much. Thank you for coming thank over. You. Lovely to see both of you. Yeah. Nice. We'll